Yeah, welcome indeed to um, Frank and the, the myriad sofas that, that came out of the woodwork, the people that I didn't even know were sofas. But, uh, yeah. uh, the first working party, so there were, a lot of work was done and then we flew out at the end of that weekend um, and that was the middle of February. Um, but then there'd been delays. Two things, <coughs> firstly it took a while for the tramping club for, for the idea to gain momentum and then secondly there was difficulty with dock in the hierarchy that was over in the North Island or in Nelson or somewhere about um, whether there should be new buildings, new huts and this, this thing just flew under the radar but it, but it took a while and it took a while to get an agreement and once we had the agreement we ordered the canvas and then it was ready but then JT wasn't, he, you were repairing bridges at that stage, it was hard to get you and it's wonderful we got you because um, as Pia said this is um, bushcraft and, and knowledge um, that is needed uh, particularly to build this, this chimney which is um, a special TDC over, over standard so we wouldn't have to fly a building inspector in pretty much <laughs> and then this Monday we flew in and it was pretty tight, you'd have to say. <laughs> John's grinning. <laughs> but um, look, there was there was three core guys. There was Wayne Sixtus, Tony Hitchcock, John Taylor, um, and I couldn't believe how the structure went up, just how fast. And wood was milled, Tony, and things were put up, and poles were put up, and it was just just a huge effort. And it's been an incredibly happy effort as well, because we. And meanwhile, Piers and I have been fiddling around the background doing um, joinery and stuff. And if you look inside in a, in a few minutes, you'll see the stools that Piers has made. 
and the door handle on the toilet and and other little <laughs> lovely little crafty things so that's it's great to yeah to have that um that side because um to me the part of the point of doing something like this is to make it an individual place and make it sort of your own special place okay just two final things firstly a word about the toilet may i recommend if you use it leave the door open because the view is stunning <laughs> and so if, if you come up the track and you see the doors open just wait or just knock on the back um, or something but um yeah it's pretty dark with the door shut but anyway it's, it's got this lovely view so um now if you go back 40 years almost it was sort of half a lifetime i was had a couple of summers up in adelaide town lonely lake and these were huts that frank had built or frank and friends and um so i'm sort of thinking back to that time with where other huts were built and then um became part of the tramping club and then became part of dock and the legacy that of the huts that Frank and his friends built and the legacy that Frank and Berner had when they, they pushed for the Nelson, um, Northwest Nelson Forest Park, mm -hmm. which has become Kaharangi, where we, we are. Um, so I think what's shared is um, a sort of a guardianship and a, and a sort of belonging. Um, technically, the, the Tramway Club owns this thing, but to me, it's not about ownership. It's about about guardianship or about um, yeah. We don't we don't need to own it, and Doc doesn't need to own it. But anyway, it's there, and um, our wish is that people come here and want to come again. Mm. That they they that there'll be people that love this place and will come Robert. time time again, yeah. and also that it's now possible for some maybe people to bring young kids and do the circuit because there's a, a place here in the middle so um <clears throat> welcome frank and welcome all of you and um that's enough from me <laughs> <laughs> let's have somebody from the dock um yes it's been um something coming back here in this neck of the woods to replace the smoky drip one which was removed a number of years ago it was kind of loosely been on the radar but was probably never going to fly with with dock and um, just with the way way things are but um, it's awesome that the tramping club have come through and 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 done it and uh, and yeah and like John said um, the the legacy of the Golden Bay Alpine Tramping Club and, and what Frank did years and years ago. Uh, it might not be well known to a lot of Golden Bay people, but um, the, last year I went to a meeting of the Federated Mountain Clubs down in Christchurch, and and believe me, um, Golden Bay Alpine Tramping Club and the legacy of, of hut building that's occurred here by the Tramping Club is is well known nationally amongst amongst those people, and um, and yeah, and that's that's largely thanks to Frank so yeah great to see you here Frank the style of hut that we've got in this valley uh, well this whole catchment from from the Eurofanua road end right right through to here is, is something that's truly unique I think and uh, and this is just perfectly fitting um, filling the gap with something that's entirely appropriate and uh, not contrasting directly with with what we've got down the track at Wainaro Forks and, and Reardon's and, and Tin Hut. And um, yeah, and some of that is, is, is largely thanks to, to Max Polglaze and it's really neat to see Max here today too. Um, at that same meeting that I went to 12 months ago, uh, that, that, that kind of got mentioned as well. I talked to a, a chap who is um, head of design school at Lincoln University and, and he was he did a bit of a lecture presentation about about structures out in the in the parks and so forth and he said that uh, 15 or 20 years ago he walked the length of the South Island and he started down in down in Bluff and he came right through to Farewell Spit and he said it wasn't until he got to Kaharangi National Park that he realised what was possible with huts and uh, 
and that was when he clapped his eyes on Cecil King's hut I think which um, which was a max uh, recreation or upgrade and <coughs> redo so um, so yeah I think it's I think it's special what we've got and um, and it's just just awesome to to have this gap filled in the in the uh, in the circuit if you like and yeah just a big big thank you to the training club and everyone that's uh, that's come along and helped um, it has been a battle um, with uh, with getting the getting the permissions and the consents and the whatever the agreements are um, yeah it, uh, with the with some of the bureaucrats further up the line I'd like to also acknowledge uh, Andrew Lamison for yeah, bashing his head against a, a brick wall at times, but also the tramping club for, for sticking to it. Um, it's not often you can um, outlast bureaucrats, but I think this time, um, collectively, uh, we did. So, um, yeah, cheers to the folk on the ground, and thank you. Sailors loom above steep alpine meadows. Vanilla blue. Brown creeper chatter in the trees, and on the track appear neat three toed prints, they say. Last night a kiwi hunted here. By Peter's Pass, when fog portends the coming weather change, in ones and twos the deers come down from off the sawtooth range. Like shadows in the swirling mist, that drifts before the breeze to vanish in the silence of the dripping black beech trees. And once we camped not far from here and watched the torrents form with cataracts descending from a sudden summer storm. From Lonely Lake the waters fall into the deep burgoo where Jim and Arthur Homeward got the gold in 32. And summer, autumn, winter, spring, a hundred years from now, how many will have passed this way between the then and now? Ooh. And if they visit Lonely Lake, this always makes me smile, this way. if they visit Lonely Lake will they remember me <laughs> who planned and built this mountain hut in 1973? <laughs> <laughs> Remember to Keith Marshall, who was first to find a route across the Douglas, or recall our good mate Peter Coote. For we have been here too, and we have done what we have done, and love this rugged land, as well as they, or anyone. I am, as you do know me all, a quiet... I knew I shouldn't have tried this word. <laughs> um, pathologically shy person <laughs> but I'm bound to say that I'm overwhelmed by what has been going on here and knowing the people involved I'm not at all surprised at what they've accomplished I've always felt that we needed a better hut at Stanley, at Lake Stanley, and when it was suggested to me that the proposed structure might be a memorial to Berna and me, I replied that my love affair with the mountains had been its own reward, but for the sake of my late wife, I would be honoured if we were to be remembered here. And for those of you who knew Berna, Think for a moment how she would have enlivened the scene had she been here today <laughs> and embraced the occasion far better than ever I can. And so, with humble gratitude to all the people who have contributed, I am now pleased to declare the Lake Stanley Tent Camp Shelter officially open. Thank you.